Father, we decrease that you would increase that. You would have your way over this word of God and land in the good soul of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration because you deserve it. You deserve it. In fact, if we spend every day of the rest of our life and every minute of every day and every hour of every day, we still would never have enough to say thank you. Never. We would still fall far short to say thank you for everything you've done. In the name of Jesus, let everybody say, I believe God. In the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, verse number 36 is where we're going to start today. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I am a firm believer that God makes a way in every situation. Did you hear what I said to you? Yeah. That God makes a way in every situation. Every situation. I don't care what it is. I've tried him. And I've found out. He's all right. And he makes a way. No matter what the situation is. No matter what the scenario is. No matter what the problem is. God makes a way. Look at somebody and say, God makes a way. So for a title or a topic for today, it's there is a way out. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, there is a way out. Look at somebody on the other side and say, hey, you over there. There is a way out. Now Luke 21 and 36, watch ye therefore and pray always. Look at somebody and say, you got to pray all the time. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And stand before the Son of Man. Let me read that again. Let's, let me just read it again. Watch ye. That's talking about us. Look at somebody say that's talking about us. Watch ye. Therefore and pray always. Tell somebody you got to pray all the time. You got to pray all the time, not just in the morning, not just at night, not just in the midday. You got to pray. I got to pray all the time. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be counted. See, there's the purpose that ye may be counted worthy to escape. Look at somebody and say there's a way out. Worthy to escape all these things, whatever it is, no matter what the obstacle, no matter what the problem, no matter what the situation, no matter what the scenario is, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and a conjunction and to stand before the son of man. Amen. Watch and Pray. Look at somebody and say, watch and pray. Watch and pray. The word watch means to take charge in the Hebrew or to keep or have charge of. To keep or have charge of. That's what it means. So the first thing he's telling us there is to keep watch or to keep charge. Keep your eyes open. Don't look at the wrong things in the wrong places, but keep your eyes open open. You hear what I'm saying to you today? So he's telling us the very first thing he says do is to watch. That's the first thing. You can't watch if your eyes is closed. You can't watch if you're looking in the wrong direction. You can't watch if you're going in the wrong area. But watch. Look at somebody and say watch. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Baby doll you and I have got to pray. Uh, you got to force it. You got to make it happen. You got to work it. You got to do what you got to do to make sure you pray. 
You got, I don't care if you got to tie yourself to an altar. There was one person years ago, amen, that struggled in prayer, and he got tired of falling asleep in prayer. So he, what he did, he got on the, the, the bathtub, the, 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 what is this thing, the bathtub, and stood on the bathtub and would pray on the bathtub so he would stay awake and not fall asleep. Look at somebody and say, you got to do what you got to do. Whatever it is, I don't care if you got to walk, you got to squirt yourself with cold water, uh, you got to pinch yourself, whatever you got to do. You have to do what you have to do. Because he said watch, and that means to keep and, or have charge of. What are you having charge of? You are responsible. We are responsible to keep in charge and watch over our soul. We are responsible for that, to make sure that we don't go into the wrong places. There's a bad saying out there that people say, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You do not take God with you everywhere you go. That is not Bible. God does not go everywhere you go and I go. That's not Bible. It's not scripture. It's nowhere in the word of God. It never has been and it will never be. Well, I'm taking God with me. No, you're not. You don't take God with you. The Bible says wherever he leads, I will follow the Bible says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So if he's leading me, then I'm following him. He's not following me. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. And so he said, watch. That means keep the charge. Look at somebody and say, keep charge. Keep charge. Watch over your soul. You got to watch it. You got to maintain it. You got to keep it. You got to make sure that nothing gets in there that's not supposed to get in there. You got to you got to uh, cut certain things out and make sure you stay a certain kind of way. Somebody can say man this morning. I, years and years ago, I used to preach a message many years ago in the early 90s called don't be beguiled. And that came out of Genesis where the serpent beguiled Eve and he deceived her and manipulated her and got what he wanted out of her. And nowadays you got all kinds of things that like to manipulate and deceive and, and beguile people and pull on people and get us to look in the wrong way and get us going in the wrong direction. And, and, and we're looking at the left when we should be looking at the right. And, 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 and Satan did that in the garden. And I tell you this, man, he was not a snake and all that other stuff. Amen. But he was very seductive. He was very deceptive. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me share this with you. The Bible said that he's so slick. He's a slick fella, that devil. He's so slick that even one third of the angels followed him. If you slice a pie in the thirds, that means a third of it went with him and the other two thirds stayed with God. Are you hearing what we say? It Now, you think about that for a moment. Those was angels that had been in the presence of God. Those was angels that had been in glory. Those was angels that knew the throne of God. Those was angels that was in the presence of the almighty king of king and lord of lords. And yet that old booger, the devil, was able to deceive them and beguile them. And then when he said that wasn't good enough, I'm going to come down to earth and I'm going to make a mess in the garden as well. Well, you have to understand something there. According to Genesis, the second chapter in the 15th verse, the Bible says God made Adam and then God took Adam and put him in the garden. And when he put him in the garden, he gave him the same charge. He used the same word, watch, which means to keep or have charge of. Now, what was Adam watching? He was the only person on the earth. Who was he watching? He was watching to make sure the devil don't get in the garden. That's what he was doing. It was his job to cultivate the ground. It was his job, which cultivate means to nurture, means to protect. That was his job. And his job was also to guard it and make sure nothing got in there that was not supposed to be in there. And yet the booger, the devil, got in there anyways because he came in camouflage. He came in disguised as something else. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? He didn't look with, 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 with that with horns on his head and a pitchfork and all of that. You have to understand something. God, the Satan always deals with beauty and God deals with integrity. 
I'm going to say that again. Satan always deals with beauty and God deals with integrity. The Bible says in Isaiah, I believe it's the 14th chapter, that he said, Behold, the anointed cherubim, Lucifer, you are beautiful and excellent. Lucifer was his name before he fell out of heaven. And he said, you're beautiful and your beauty is excellent. No, it's 28th chapter, excuse me, of Isaiah. And you're beautiful and you're excellent. And yet he uses beauty to deceive even to this day. People fall for beauty left and right. Oh, it looked good, so it must be right. It feel good, so it must be right. It seemed good, so it must be right. You know, you see a banana split, and it's got the, uh, the what's that, the, the, the whipped cream on there, and the, the chocolate on there, and the cherry on the top, and the, and, and the ice cream, whatever you like, milk or almond fudge, or chocolate or vanilla, strawberry, whatever you whatever your fancy is and it look good and it tastes good but there's thousands and thousands of calories and carbohydrates in there and then when you consume it now it, you may go work out but yet that's those that all that sugar builds up into the cells of your body and it's much harder to give out but it sure look good and taste good it's very appealing well the devil know how to be appealing to somebody he know how to make it look good sound good he know how to make it feel good y'all not talking to me today he know how to tickle your fancy he know if you like promotion he know how to send you a promotion if you like money he know how to send you some money if you like a car he know how to send you a car if you like a man he know how to send you a man if you like a woman he know how to send you a woman if you like to play the lotto lottery gamble if you're playing lotto lottery you might as well just go on to Reno and Tahoe anyways it's the same thing Thing, going and do it anyways and I'm not encouraging you to do that but it's not God's way I'll tell you that much it has never been God's way it has never will be God's way somebody could say man but if you think about Reno and Tahoe they look nice you got lights and it's splendid and we got family fun going on here and all this nice stuff and people get there I'm sorry ladies and gentlemen I don't want to go to no place where it's called Sin City and whatever goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas well they just made they forgot one thing when they made that commercial the Bible says the eyes of the Lord behold both the good and the evil that men do so you can go to Vegas all you want to I might not see you but God sees you and guess what it even go deeper you ain't got to go to Vegas to mess up you can go across the street and do that one you ain't even got to go all spend all that money you can do that in your own house and mess up somebody can say amen to me but he said watch look at somebody say watch and pray always always don't stop praying don't stop I got my inspiration get it back I lost my drive get it back I lost my push get it back I lost my desire get it back I lost the go ye get it back I lost the excitement. Get it back. Whatever you got to do, get it back. Look at somebody say, get it back. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Anybody that don't pray won't stay. If you don't fast, you will not last. You have got to pray. You have got to fast. You have got to read the word of God. For the Bible says, study daily to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. That's 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 2.15. That means I got to study the word of God on a daily basis. I got to pray. That's your three elements of success. Number one, you got to pray. Look at somebody say pray. Number two, you got to stay in that word of God. Number two. And number three, you got to put some fasting in there. Push the plate aside. Push the TV aside. Push the uh, internet aside. And just let God be God. Say amen. 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 The devil, amen. There are many ways we can fall. One way we can fall is in doubt. We can start doubting and we, we believe, but we yet doubt. Amen. The one man said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief and whatever we doubt can creep in there and we start doubting God and start doubting God's ability to keep us start doubting God's ability to hold us start doubting God's ability to be the God of Abraham and Isaac and 
Jacob. And you're listening to me today. Amen. The God that yet save and deliver. Number two, unbelief can get in there. And where we start unbelieving and don't believe that God is able to do exactly what he said he's going to do. That's why you got to watch and always pray. Amen. You have to watch and always pray. Amen. You can't do, if you stop watching and praying, you will start unbelieving God. You will start doubting God. You will start looking to the left and, 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 you, and, and should not be looking to the left. That's why it takes more than marriage to keep somebody from messing up. It takes more than marriage to keep somebody from messing up. The, if you get married just so you don't mess up, wrong answer, baby. You, that's good. Go on and get married. Have a good time. But you need to have a bulldog grip on God, too. You need to love God enough to where, God, I don't want to break your heart. God, I don't want to step out on you. God, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt you. You say, how can I hurt God? Don't you know that God has a heart, too? That God has a heart, and his heart is full of compassion. His heart is full of love. His heart is full of, uh, 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 of tenderness towards us and that we can hurt God's heart too. Where God will say, I love you so much, I don't want to share you with anyone. And then sometimes we get overtaken and end up doing things we ought not to do. And God says, now my heart is hurt. Somebody can say amen. Amen. So unbelief. Another way we can doubt God or, or fall is to lie. Amen. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake that burning with fire. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. This is going to knock your socks off. Hallelujah to Jesus. Did you not know that hell is temporary? Hell is not the final destination. Hell is just a pit stop. The Bible says hell was made for uh, the devil and his angels. I'm going to tell you something else. The people that are in hell, they're not even judged yet. They're not even judged. That's not even judgment if somebody go to hell. Judgment is not to the white throne at the very end and then everybody's judged out of the books. That's why the Bible says that the, all the books will be open and then there's another book which is the book of life and that's where the names have to be found. That is the judgment there and look at somebody and say when I get to that point I want to be judged for righteousness. But he said, all liars will have their part. People lie for everything. They lie on the income tax. They lie on the insurance. They lie on the income paper. They lie on this. They lie on that. They lie. Some folks lie to their own self. Did you not know that denial is lying to yourself? That when you are in denial, that is a lie. When you know something is true about you and you still don't believe it, that is a lie right there. And you don't believe it and you make excuses for it. You make reasons for it. That is a lie right there. And he said, all liars will have their part. Look at somebody and say, help me, Lord. Look at somebody else and say, help me, Lord. Amen. So that's another way we can fall. Another way to fall is to walk in fear. I walk in fear. The Bible says God has not given us fear, but given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a what? Sound mind. Amen. You know, there's an old saying, I'd rather, be, I'd rather be respected than feared. And that's a true statement. You don't want people to fear you. You want people to respect you. Because the person that fears somebody, they're liable to pull up a, a knife, a gun, and shoot them and kill them or whatever. But if people respect one another, then we can have mutual understanding. You understand what I'm saying to you today. But he said to walk in fear. Some people are fearful of failure. They're fearful of commitment. Well, we've been at this for 25 years. When are we going to say I do? Well, it's got to come to an end at some point. Y'all not listening to me today. Amen. We keep playing with this thing. When are we going to get serious about this? Say amen somebody amen walk in fear fear in a fear to, to to believe God fear to trust God fear to step out and do the great things that God has told you to do amen fear to, to believe God that God is God and he's able to strengthen you and bring you through somebody can say amen, amen. from the beginning from the very beginning man has been ordered to watch 
from the very beginning that we have been told to watch. You can't watch if you're looking the wrong way. Now, a whole bunch of folk in here go to gyms and work out and even go to Pier 39 and all of these other places, and that's fine and good, and I'm happy for you. That's great. I go to some of those places. But you got to be careful that you don't get caught up looking in the wrong direction. You got to be caught up, whether you're male or female. We always put it on the men that the men are the one that men that do the looking. It's not just just men that do looking, women do looking too. It's not just men that mess up, women mess up too. Amen. Women have problems too. Oh, yes, they do. And I'm not you being a male chauvinist. No, I'm being real today. That's what I'm doing. Amen. Women have problems too. Statistically, it's three to one that women look at pornography more than men. Statistically, women, three to percent more than men. Women have problems too. Amen. So everybody got to keep their eyes on Jesus. <laughs> Everybody's got to look at the Lord. We can't, we can't afford one moment of looking the wrong way. You're talking about, well, that's just talking about physical attraction. Right. But we could also look the wrong way and become ambitious. We can look the wrong way and lust after power and position. We can look the wrong way and want something. People look at uh, Sister Smith and I and they see certain things we got and they say, I want that too. But they don't realize you have not paid the price that Sister Smith and I have paid. You have not suffered like we have suffered. Some folks, well, Sister Smith traveling all over the world. I want to travel too. Well, baby, you ain't been saved 25 and 30 years. You haven't suffered yet like that. You have not spent time, quality time with God to the point to where you're at. God can say, I can release you like that. Look at somebody and say, you got to get some learning with your burning. And it takes time to get seasoned with God. Well, you got it. Why I can't have it too? Because maybe you're not at the same level that I'm supposed to be at. There's some things you got that I don't have. There's some things you get that I don't have. But I got to be content in whatever state I am in. Say amen, somebody. Now, when he said pray always, the purpose is to keep a 24-hour, 380-degree panoramic. Free of obstruction. So there's nothing in my view that's obstructing me from seeing anything. I can see every direction. I can see north. I can see south. I can see east. I can see west. I can see every way that the devil is coming. Do you not know the Bible says Satan is a fox? Satan is a snake. It types him as a fox. It types him as a snake. It types him as being cunning and deceiver. It types him as being one that knows how to allure. And if you don't have 24 uh, our vision and a clear panoramic to see every direction you will get ensnared he will sneak in there so you got to clear the pathway look at somebody and say clear the pathway you got to clear the pathway of obstruction that means I might have to let somebody go I might have to change where I live at I might have to change my job I might have to change the way I go to work every day. I might have to change some things the way I do. I may have to rearrange my schedule or go on the DVR or whatever the thing is called and delete some programs because they're obstructing my view. Y'all don't like my talk right now. I may have to go on there and go through my phone and delete some phone numbers because they are obstructing my view. I may have to look on the text and say, you know what, I'm going to block you and I'm going to block you and I'm going to block you and I'm going to block you because you have become an obstruction to me you have become a hindrance to me and therefore I can't see clearly because I get fixated on you somebody know I'm telling the truth today amen there are some things in this life that get a hold of us and we can't shake it loose on our own amen we can try we can try to do what we're going to do, but there's something the old saying used to be, you can touch some things and let them go, but you can touch some things and it won't let you go. There's some things, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I can get involved in and you can pull away with no problem. But then there's some things that you can get involved with and when you try to pull away, it pulls you back. It holds you back. Because it's got a hold into your soul. Y'all not listening to me. Amen. That's not just talking about sexuality. But that's talking about you can get involved too much in the wrong area. And you're too connected with the wrong area. Too many friends. Too much stuff going on. And it blocks the vision of God. You are too much family involved. Cousin always wanting this. Auntie always wanting that. 
uncle always wanting this. Somebody always in your space invading and you can't hear clearly from God. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Amen. And you get bound up and tangled up and wrapped up and then can't hear what God is saying clearly. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Amen. But there is a way out. Look at somebody say, there is a way out. Amen. God don't put nobody in impossible situations. There is a way out. Turn it to Job, the first chapter. Turn it to Job, the first chapter. Hallelujah to Jesus. And let's see what the Bible says. Job in the old book, the first chapter. Job, chapter one. Hallelujah. Verse seven says this. And the Lord said unto Satan, they had a dialogue. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from huh, going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. The Lord, so the Lord said, where you been? He said, I've been all in the earth. I've been on the West Coast and the East Coast. I've been down in the South in Texas, and I've been up in the North in North Dakota. I've been in Europe, and I've been in Africa. I've been in Spain, and I've been in Italy. I've been in China, and I've been in Japan. I've been in the desert, and I've been in the ocean. I've been in the jungle, and I've been in the frozen tundra, and I'm looking for somebody to get a hold of. And then the Lord, of course, he says, have you considered Job and whatever? But now we're not talking about Job. We're talking about us. And they look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. Watch, out. watch out. There's a devil on the prowl. And he's walking through the earth looking for somebody to get a hold of. When you sleep, he's busy. When you on the phone, he's busy. When you go into your daily routine, he's busy. When you walk at the grocery store, he's busy. He just said it here. I've been walking to and fro from the earth, in the earth. I'm looking for somebody to get a hold of. Somebody that's not praying. Somebody that's not watching, somebody that's not looking, somebody that's not steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, <laughs> always abounding in the work of the Lord. Somebody that's not walking by faith, somebody that's walking in the flesh, somebody that's not listening to the preacher and going to sleep when he's preaching or something like I'm looking for somebody to get a hold of. He said, I'm walking to and fro through the earth. That means I'm looking in the blind of your house, of your heart and see, is the Holy Spirit there? No. Oh, like he's there. I got to go to the next one. Then he goes a little further and say, let me see what's over here. And he said, no, they're praising God over there. I can't mess with that one. Then he goes back over here and said, what's going on in this land? And he said, oh, they listening to Barry Manilow over here. And they listen to Barry White over here. Oh, I see. But yet they go into the church too. Then he, he whistles and says, hey, demon uh, Bigfoot. And hey, demon uh, uh, seduction. And hey, demon lie. Go on and sit over here. And then he goes a little further and he said, what they doing over here? Oh, they fasting over there and they're praying there. So I'll leave that one alone. And then he walks a little further and goes, oh, here they go again. They in the church, but they talking about one another. They got gossip over here. They got click over here. They laughing at this one and making fun of that one. Then he says, now gossip spirit, get in there. Now he says, lion spirit, get in there. And he's walking to and fro through the earth looking for somebody to get a hold of. That's why you and I have got to watch and all Always pray. When you own your job, it's not your boss that's messing with you. It's the devil going through the earth looking for somebody to get a hold of. It's not that woman or that man that's messing with you. It's the devil looking for somebody to get a hold of. Because the Bible says he's walking through and fro through the earth looking for somebody to get a hold of. Clap your hands and say amen. <laughs> now turn it to First Peter. Let's back it up. Turn it to 1 Peter and see what the Bible says. 1 Peter and see what the word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 5. Look at somebody and say there's a devil on the loose. The devil. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 uh, Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says this. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Why are you carrying your baggage? Why are you carrying your issue? Why are you carrying your problem? 
Why are you carrying your grown adult children? Why are you carrying your friend and your family member? Oh, it's quiet right there. Why are you carrying your husband or your wife? Why are you carrying the care for these folk that's grown and know God and just don't want to listen and just rebellious? Why are you carrying them anyways? This is what it says right here. Casting all, does it say all in your Bible? Does it say all in your Bible? Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. That means give it to God. Look at somebody say, give it to God. Yeah. You can't, they ain't gave me no raise. Well, big deal. Give it to God. Well, they didn't acknowledge me on the job. Big deal. Give it to God. Well, I'm tired of this and I'm tired of wearing the same Shabira shoes. If they still look good working and you don't have a hole in them, if you got a hole, put your little cardboard in there and keep it moving until God bless you with some more. What's the problem? Say Amen. Amen. When we got saved, Sister Smith had one dress and I had one pair of slacks and a bright red Christmas sweater. That's it. An ugly Christmas sweater. She had a gold yellow dress, looked like out of a gold mine somewhere, something like that. It was gold and whatever. And that's all we had. It's the truth before God. That's all we had. And we came to church every Sunday, pressed it, cleaned it, washed it. And came to church with it every Sunday after Sunday with the same thing on. Didn't have a whole lot of money. We lived in the tenderloin and all that. And still praised and loved God like we had lost our mind. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Amen. Where and where about? Well, you know, you don't have on the newest this and the newest that. That's fine, but I got Jesus on the inside, and that's what I need. Somebody can say amen right there. Hallelujah. Casting all your care upon him, for, the, for he careth for you. Now, here we go. Be sober, be vigilant, because your what? Adversary, the devil, is as a what? Roaring lion, walking, uh, excuse me, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The same devil that was in Job is the same devil now. The same devil that was walking around then is the same devil now. The same devil that was looking for somebody to get a hold of then is walking around now. The same devil that's looking to leap on somebody, he's an opportunist, is the same one now. The same devil that said, I'm looking to devour somebody. Notice the Bible called him an adversary. That means somebody that's in against what you are. And he's an adversary. He's the same devil and uses the same tricks and the same ploys. That's why we got to watch and always pray. Amen. Now listen, there's a difference between praying and prayer. When you pray in is when you come and you get down and you do your thing and you thank you, Lord Jesus, and thank you, Lord God, and God, you're good, and oh, God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, and God bless you, Lord God, and that's pray in, and you do that, Lord God, thank you, Lord God, and maybe shed a tear or two, that's pray in, but, that, that, but then when you pray, when you get into prayer, huh? now you get into the God, do it right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, move right, and that's not fake, and I'm not playing games either, that's that's straight from the Holy Ghost. But you're praying in the spirit. The Bible says, how can you worship him unless you are what? In the spirit. Somebody can say amen to me. Amen. And you got a devil. You got an adversary that is as a roaring lion. And he's walking through the earth looking for somebody to devour. But look at somebody and say, God has made a way out. He's made a way out. I don't care if your back is against the wall. And it feel like everybody is turning it back on you. And everybody's beginning to walk out on you. God has made a way out. You got a devil that's trying to come through every door he can come through. He's coming through the window. He's coming through the back door. He's coming through your kids. He's coming through your job. He's coming through your money. He's coming through your, your, your emotions. And that's why half of y'all sitting there right now and don't even see it. But the devil is riding your mind right now. The devil is messing with your stuff. You got to watch and pray somebody can say man it's time it's time there's a devil on the loose the bible says he's seeking who he may devour he's seeking to get a hold of somebody he's seeking to deceive you he's seeking to lie to you now some folks will say that's not me i'm prayed up and tanked up i'm gonna tell you right now you off just right there by thinking like that because anytime you hear the word of truth you say you know what i might miss something God God help me. I may not see everything, but God help me. Clap your little bitty hands and say amen. 
there's a devil on the loose. You wondering why you can't get ahead. You wondering why it seemed like we got a promotion, but we still struggling. You wondering why it seemed like I got all my family under my roof and we still struggling. There's a devil on the loose. And you need to understand something that even though the devil's on the loose, God has made a way out for you. God has made a way out for you. You got to keep your eyes open. You got to keep your spirit in prayer. You got to keep your heart before the Lord and hear what God is saying. Clap your hands and say amen. I wish I was in Shambox Church right now because some people knew when the devil was loose, they say it's time to pray. Too many Christians wait for the devil to get busy and then start praying. You need to pray now. Look at somebody and say, pray now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. But now. I want you to do something right now because the devil, I want everybody to stand on your feet right now. Stand on your feet right now. Stand on your feet right now. And I want you to do a walk around this building. I'm not going to steal this message. Walk now. Walk. Everybody, walk. Everybody. Everybody, walk. Lift your hands and say, I give God praise. Come on, lift your hands and say, I give God praise. Come on, lift your hands and say, I give God praise. Come on, lift your hands and say, I give God praise. Come on. Come on, lift your hands and say, I give God praise. The devil is a lie. He's not going to steal this message. Come on, lift your hands and say, I give God praise. Come on, lift your hands and say, I give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch this around. Maria, I want you on the front row. Tana, I want you on the front row. Eddie, y'all go to the back row. I want Denise, I want you on the front row. I want some of you, la- I want ladies on the front row. We're going to switch this thing up right now. Have it and get back to your seats. Hallelujah. The devil is a lie. We're not going to miss this message today. Because the devil wearing too many of y'all out with y'all kids and y'all family. You, and all this other business. And you need to hear what God is saying to you today. Hallelujah to Jesus. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to break through. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. Did we read 1 Peter chapter 5, 7, and 8? Sister Hurst, I want you to come down here next to Sister Smith. Hallelujah. Sister Cynthia, I want you to come down here next to Sister Hersey. Praise God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Say amen, somebody. All right. Did I read? Let me read it again. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, look at somebody say the adversary, the devil, the adversary, the devil is as a roaring lion walking, walketh. Now walk is, look at, he didn't say walk, he said walketh. That means he's continually moving around looking to get a hold of somebody. He's continually looking ahead, get, trying to get a hold of somebody. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I remember, amen, when, I, when you hungry and you get home, you devour whatever you're going to eat. Whether it's a hamburger, a hot dog. Back in the day, I would make a plate with six chili dogs on it and devour every last one of them. When I would get hungry, when I get home from UPS and a bag of chips, that's why I'm in the gym now. Amen. And the devil is the same way. He's looking to devour somebody. He's trying to devour your faith. He's trying to devour your testimony. He's trying to devour your joy. He's trying to devour your breakthrough. That's why you ever wonder why you have joy for a season, but then after a season you get depressed again. You ever wonder why you have joy for a moment, and then after a moment or after a couple of months, it seems like you're back. Back in the same rut, it's because there's a devil that's designed to take your joy. He's designed to rob your inspiration, and you gotta always pray. Too many times after the victory is over, we get relaxed and set back and be at ease. Baby doll, lady and gentlemen, let me tell you something. You can't get relaxed at all. You gotta keep your foot on the gas pedal for God. You can't stop 
and catch your breath for one minute. You got to stay in the race the whole time. You can't get back and say, I'm relaxed now. Everybody's home now. Everybody's safe now. The devil is a lie. You got to pray more when they get in your house than when they was in the street. You got to pray more when you get your promotion than before you had your promotion. You got to pray more when you get your house than before you had your house. Clap your hands and say amen. You got a devil that wants to take it. Turn it to Hebrews with me. And let's see what the Bible says. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I've been in this thing too long and I'm not about to give up. What about you? Look at somebody and say, I'm not about to give up. Hallelujah to Jesus. Tim, uh, Hebrews, the second chapter and verse number three says this. How shall we escape? <laughs> How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to speak by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? How can we escape if we neglect the word of God? How can we escape? If we neglect what God has said do in God, there is safety. Now that word escape in the Greek, it means to have safety or bring to safety through danger. We go through all types of things through our daily life and God is yet keeping us in the midst of the fire. Y'all hearing what I'm saying to you today? And he said, how can we escape with so great a cloud of salvation? In other words, if you follow God's plan, you will escape. If you follow God's plan, you will get out. That's why, like I said a few moments ago, you get victory for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden, something happened. It's like, who turned out the lights? We got breakthrough. Everything started to work. My husband got a job. I got a job. Money was good, and everything was right. The kids was doing good. And then a couple of months later, bam. Somebody turn out the lights and everything went wrong. It's because there's a devil that wants to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. Just because you got victory don't mean the devil going to stop. Just because you got breakthrough don't mean the devil going to sit down. Just because you got a shout don't mean the devil going to shut up. He's still going to continue. But even if that, you can escape the wrath of the enemy. Say amen, somebody. He said, how can we neglect so great a cloud of witnesses? Number one, you got to Follow the gospel. Look at somebody and say, follow the gospel. You got to follow the gospel. Don't deviate from the gospel. Don't go to the left from the gospel. Don't go do your own thing. Don't have your own mindset, your own way of doing it. But do it the way the Bible says do it. Don't change it up and, and fix it so it fits you. That's why I told y'all two months ago, stop saying this is what it mean to me. It's not about what it mean to you. It's what did the word of God say. Stick to what the Bible says. Say amen, somebody. That's number one. Follow the gospel. Number two, stay close to God. Baby, pray in the morning. Pray in the noonday. Pray in the midnight hour. Pray when you're sitting at your job on the computer. Pray when you're on the commuter bus. Pray when you're in your car. Pray when you're in the Walmart line. Pray when you're sitting on the commode. Pray when you're in the shower. Pray when you're putting on your clothes. Pray when you're eating your food. Pray, 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 and pray some more. Don't ever stop. Look at somebody and say, don't stop. Keep it going. Hallelujah. And stay close to God. Don't let nothing come between you and God. Don't let nobody to get between you and God. If somebody say, I need all of your time, you not the one to be with me. If someone say, I want this and I want that. If it take you from God, you not the one. Somebody can say amen right there. Stay close to God. Do whatever you got to do. Stop shutting out and shut in. Stop shutting away from God and get close to God. Tell your kids, I'm sorry, I can't go this week. I can't go this time. 
I got to spend time with God. Somebody can say amen. Amen. Tell folks, you need to back up. I got to be close to my God. I got to spend time locked in with God. I got to shut in with God. I got to hear from God. Too many people's hearing from other kind of voices. You're hearing from Joyce Meyer, and you're hearing from T.D. Joke. You're hearing from Hill Song Music. You're hearing from Joel Osteen. You're hearing from this one and that one, but you're not hearing from God. And when you hear from God, it's a rhema word from God, and it speaks down into the subterranean valley of your soul. It speaks down into your heart. It speaks down to where you are. You listen to the wrong voice. You listen to your mama, what she say. You listen to your daddy, what he say. You listen to your grandparents, what they say. But what did Jesus say? What did the word of God say? That's what you need to listen to, because he's the one that makes a way to escape. Clap your hands and say amen. Hallelujah. You got to listen to God. We got to look at somebody and say, you got to listen to God. Come up here and help me with this, Sister Smith. You got to listen to God and tune other stuff out. Amen. Too many other voices. You may have, can you imagine if you went a day and didn't talk to nobody? Can you imagine what that was like if you went a whole day and you didn't talk to nobody? Thank you. You didn't talk to nobody. You didn't do no, uh, what's that thing, the text. You didn't do no phone call. You didn't do no phone message. You didn't look on Instagram and fax. You didn't look on your email. You didn't respond to nobody. And it was just 24 hours, you and God. Now, a whole lot of us are scared because we know God's going to start talking to us about some stuff. So we don't want to do that one. But imagine what it would be like if the only voice you heard was the voice of God. <laughs> if, if that was the only voice. About a couple of weeks ago, I was on the train treadmill machine or the elliptical thing and God now I usually turn my music on or listen to some preaching or the word of God and the Lord said turn it off and don't listen to nothing <laughs> just listen to me and I began to turn it off and it started off with me just doing it that for about 10 or 20 minutes and I would turn it back on and then 20 minutes went to 30 and 30 went to an hour and then suddenly I found myself being on the catch this now I'm on the elliptical with the earphones on but not listening listening to nothing but Jesus not no gospel music not nobody preaching not nobody talking but listening straight ha listen straight to God and I'm hearing God talk about this and talk about that I'm hearing God speak about this and speak about that and God said tune it all out and listen to me because there's a devil on the run say amen somebody and we got to learn to do that you got to learn to do that number three be led of the Holy Spirit Spirit. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Stop being led by your emotions. Stop being led by I feel this and I feel that. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Stop being led by what your situation look like. Look at what your circumstance look like and be led by the Spirit of God. Stop being led by what well, it feel like this and it seem like this. It don't matter what it seem or what it feel. Be led by the Spirit of God. Stop being led by your eyes. Hallelujah to Jesus. You need to do what Isaiah said. Lord, anoint our eyes with eyes say, that we can see in the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit of God. Somebody can say amen. Being led by the Spirit of God. And be led by, and God will direct you. That's one way we can keep from getting in trouble, is being led by the Spirit of God. Because God's not going to lead us into temptation. <laughs> God's going to make a way out of every way. Clap your little bitty hands and say amen. Number four, number four, walk in the wisdom of God. Walk in the wisdom of God. Not man's wisdom, not your wisdom, not my wisdom, but the wisdom of God. Not what you and I think, but the wisdom of God. Not what it seemed like. You know, sometimes we ask too many people, what do you think? What do you think? And we forget to ask God, what do you think? We ask everybody else, what do you think? And forget to say, God, what do you say? What is your opinion on this? We ask, well, I'm going to ask my boss on the job. They've been saved a long time. I'm going to ask this one. And God said, what you asking them for? Why don't you ask me? And see what I got to say about it. Say amen, somebody. Walk in the wisdom of God. Amen. So I'm going to recount them. Follow the gospel. Stay close to God. Be led by the Holy Spirit and walk in the wisdom of God. Say amen, somebody. Now let's bring it to a close right quick. Turn it to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And let's see what the Bible says here. 
1 Corinthians chapter 10 says this. There hath no temptation. To, I'm in verse 13. I hear pages turning. That means you're following. That's good. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Because there's a way out. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's common. It's not unusual. It's common. There is no, there have no temptation. Nudge somebody and say, he's talking about me. Come on, nudge somebody and say, he's talking about me. There have no temptation taken you. Huh. Ain't nothing happened to you. Such as is common to man. You're not special. Huh. I'm not special. Nobody had it like me. The devil, yo, yes, they have. Oh, yes, they have. No, have there have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. How many know God's faithful? God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Let's continue. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now, hold it. I always thought that that meant that God was going to take me out of everything. I always thought that that meant that God was going to make a way to escape out of everything. That's what I thought it meant. And I read it again and again and again. The Holy Spirit, began. for years, I thought this is what he means. That out of every situation, God going to make a way to escape. That's not what he said. He did not say, out of every situation, I'm going to make a way to escape. He said, I'm going to make a way for you to bear it. That is the way to escape. I'm going to make a way for you to be able to bear it and handle it. That is the doorway out. I said, oh, then it made sense, Sister Denise, because then I remember Brother Shambach's testimony. He was preaching a revival in Texas, and he had a heart attack when he was driving. The man got out the car and ran down the side of the freeway and said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We're having a heart attack. Thank you, Lord. It was his own testimony. He's gone now, but he ran, he's having a heart attack. He just ran down the street. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Having a heart attack. It wasn't God wasn't delivering him from the heart attack, but God was blessing him to be able to bear it because he still had more preaching to do in the midst of it. And it's not that God going to take me out of my stuff. Some things God say, you're going to go through this, but I'm going to help you be able to bear it. That is the way to escape. When you get close to God, my goodness, today, when you get close to God and you shut in with God and you lock in with God, now you can bear it. Now you can handle it. It's not that God going to make a way, open up a, this brick wall and you walk right through this brick wall God said no baby doll you're not going through that wall but I'm going to show give you some strength to be able to bear this thing <laughs> I'm going to give you some strength where you can stand through the fire I'm going to give you some strength so you can stand through the power stand through what's going on stand through the trial stand through everything that is happening to you you can stand it you can bear it there's a devil that's going to wear you out don't you know the Bible said in the last day that the devil would wear the saints out? But God said, I'm going to help you be able to bear this thing. I'm not going to take you out of it, but you're going to bear it. You're going to be able to stand in it. That is your way of escape. Lord, I thought you was going to remove the financial burden. God said, no, I ain't doing that. But what I am going to do is give you the ability to bear that situation and be able to have the wisdom to walk through that situation. So when you come out on the other side, that is your way to escape. That is your way out. Now we look at God like he's uh, Aladdin and you got a magic carpet and you just make your wish and woof, here I go. <laughs> woof. Imagine Aladdin, rub the lamp three times and get your wish. God said, I'm not no genie. You're not getting no wish. I'm going to help you be able to bear this thing. My God today, say man, somebody. Lord Jesus, you're going to be able to look at somebody and say, can you bear it? Come on, nudge somebody and say, can you bear it? Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and say, I know I can because I'm getting close to God. Amen. Let me read that again, that latter half, so you can get it in your spirit. But with the temptation, see? <laughs> but with, but will, with the temptation. Didn't say taking nothing. 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to what? Say it again. Say it again. Way, be able to bear it. Well, they're talking about me. You can bear it. Well, my money's messed up. You can bear it. Well, my car broke down. You can bear it. Well, my child ran off. You can bear it. Well, my husband left me. You can bear it. Well, your wife left you. I can bear it. Well, my body's feeling funny. I can bear it. My mind is not right. I can bear it. No matter what the situation is, I can bear it. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Not take you out of it, but take you through it. God did not deliver them out of the storm, but he came walking to them in the midst of the storm <laughs> on the water. He didn't, at that time, he didn't say wind and wave be still, but he came to them in the midst of the storm. We're looking for God to take us out of the storm. And God said, I'm not going to take you out of this storm. You're going to go through this storm, but I'm going to give you the ability to bear it. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. I give you the ability to bear it. Now turn it to uh, Psalm 17 as we wrap it up. Psalm 17. Hallelujah to Jesus. Out of every situation, he makes a way to escape. Hallelujah. Psalm 17 and 3. Thou hast proved my heart. Huh. Thou hast visited me in the night. Huh. Thou hast tried me. And shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. God, you tried me and I'm hanging in there. God, you tried me and there was nothing foul in me. There wasn't no lying in there. There wasn't no cursing in there. There wasn't no backbiting in there. There wasn't no slipping in there. There wasn't no tripping in there. There wasn't no cursing God in there. There wasn't no falling out of God in there. You tried me and you see that I stood true. You allowed things to go wrong and you see I didn't curse you and go crazy. You allowed things to go against me and you see I didn't curse you with my mouth. Look at the last part there. And I suppose that my mouth shall not transgress. Sometimes we can say some pretty harsh things. We can start cursing ourselves. We can start cursing the situation. We can start cursing things around us. We can start speaking negativity. We can start saying, woe is me. Why all this always happened to me? Why am I always the one? Why did I always happen to me? Why is my family the one messed up? Why is my car the one broke? Why is my job the one with the problems? Why, 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 why? And God said right here, or the person, the writer said right here, I will not transgress. Even though my car may be broken, I'm still going to praise you anyways. Even though my family may be buck wild, I'm still going to praise you anyways. Even though things may be going to the left, I'm still going to praise you anyways. I will not transgress your word. Your word says I am victorious. Your word says I am a conqueror. Your word says I am the head and not the tail. Your word says I am delivered. Your word says I am healed. Your word says I am prosperous. Your word says I am broke. I'm breakthrough. Your word says I am a, I am a giant. Your word says I'm a conqueror and therefore I am going to stand on your word. I will not transgress you with my mouth. I'm not going to go back on my vow. I promise you I was going to fast three days a week and then when things got tough, I knocked it down to one day. No, I'm going to keep my vow with you, God. I promise you I was going to pray every day for an hour every day. But then my job said we need more overtime and we need more of this. And some of you, your job has become a devil to you. You spend more time at your job. You spend more time doing work than you spend before God. And your job has become a devil now. And that job dominates your time. You don't have time to pray. You don't have time to fast. You don't have time to seek God. Well, I listen to God while I'm at work. I watch God. when That's not unadulterated to God. That's, con that's contaminated. That's diluted. It's not pure because you got to watch your work while you listening to God. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. This is old school preaching. I know it is, but it's the truth and whatever. But you're divided when you're at your job. When I drove the UPS truck, I listened to the gospel music and listened to the preaching and all that, but I was divided in what I was doing. I could not focus on the gospel and drive the truck at the same time. And God had to teach me that that is just maintaining yourself. 
that's not breaking through right there. That's not being locked in right there. But the locking in is when you get off work. When you get off work and go home or you come to the church and you spend time with God in the church. You lay out with God in the church and you tell the wife, I'll be home in a couple of hours. And you don't leave the church. You don't come to go to sleep, but you come to touch the hem of his garment. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right now, but that's all right. But you come to the church and you lock in the church and you spend time with God and you might get home and only get three hours of sleep. But the Bible clearly says, I'll give you sweet sleep. I've seen God magnify two hours of sleep as though you had eight hours. When you put God first and you lock in with God, when you shut in with God and shut out from the devil, when you say, for God I live and for God I die, I'm going to put, I'm going to pay my vow to God and not transgress with my mouth. Well, God, you understand, like Adam said, it's the woman you gave me. Some of us blame our family for everything. Well, my family is problem. My family needs my time. My family needs this. My family needs that. And God said, it's time out for making excuses on your family. Your family don't have nothing to do with me and you. It's time for you to give me what's due me. It's time for you to lock it with me because you can't watch the devil if you're looking at your family. You can't watch the devil if you're watching your family. You can't watch the devil if you're concerned around what you around. But you got to lock in with God. Clap your hands and say amen. I'm telling you what the truth is. I'm telling you what it is. If you're going to stay saved today, you got to do it the old way. You got to lock in with God and get full of the Holy Ghost. All this cute little stuff they're doing. Read your little bitty Bibles, and that's nice. You got a Bible for women and a Bible for men. You got a Bible for kids and a Bible for old folk. And there ain't but one Bible that it should be. And you got to read that and get full of the Holy Ghost. Get locked in with God. Some people say, well, I just can't get with that. Well, that's your problem, not mine. You got to realize something. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. If the old saints needed to do it, you need to do it. If the old saints had to struggle and do it and press their way, you have to press your way. Clap your hands and say amen. I'm reminded, hallelujah, to Jesus, of when the old saints would have shut-ins and pray. When the old saints would spend all night long praying. I was talking to Pastor George yesterday, and we, he called me. I was in the grocery store, and we began to talk. And he said he just got out of an all-night prayer vigil at 7 in the morning. He had been praying all night to 7 in the morning at Nation Takers Church. And then he had to go to his kid's birthday party and what have you. And then after that, he got to preach today. And I said, my God, man, he said, but but you know what? I love doing what I do. I said, I can hear you, brother. I love it too. And then he said, I got to preach tomorrow, but that's okay. Then we had a Holy Ghost prayer on the phone line and started charging one another up on the prayer line. It doesn't matter when you put God first and you seek God first. When you lay down your stuff, lay down your agenda, lay down your things and put God first, then God will give you supernatural strength where you can stand in the midst of it. You can stand in the midst of what you're going through. You can stand in the midst of the trial, but God wants you to be first. Clap your hands and say amen. You know, this, this stuff is so cute nowadays. Brother Darrell, it's so watered down. If you tell people we're going to fast till 12, they'll sleep till 11. And take a shower from 11 to 11.30 and then spend the last 30 minutes talking about I did it. I fasted. But you slept till 10 o'clock in the morning. Or 11. And then you got up and took a shower from 11 to 11.30. You ain't did no fasting. Woo! Look at somebody say, there's a devil on the loose. I did, brother pastor. I hooked up with you. No. Because I was up at 5 in the morning and you were still sleeping. Well, I got up at 10 and 10.30, you know, and all that. And God said, well, I don't care about your 10.30. Get up. Get up. You got to go to work. That's fine. Put God first and let God breathe on them hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Put God first. Looking, we're looking for ways to escape and call the pastor. I need you to pray for me. I need, I need, please call me. I need you to pray for me. And we pray in prayers and we're trying to pray you out of things. And God said, you can't pray out of that. They got to bear that. You're 
trying to pray, Reverend, and they got to bear that one. I said, I know, Lord, but I'm just feeling compassion for him. He said, I got compassion too, but they got to bear that. In some cases, they dug the hole. Now you got to let them dig their way out. Because I got some good ideas. I know how to help you get out of some stuff. I'm good. Oh, yeah, I can come up with some stuff. We can do this. We can do that. And then God said, well, won't you, will you just go ahead and be God and let me sit here and you do that part. And so you got to let them dig their way out of it. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? My last scripture. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Now this is Jesus talking. He says, he gonna come, but there's nothing in me. You wonder why you keep having a problem and you can't keep victory? Because there's something in you that he can get a hold of. Jesus said, there's nothing in me. So let him come. There's nothing in there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you can get to a place where there's nothing in you for him to come after. There's nothing in there for him to come and pull at you at. That's why I said last week you could take me and lock me up in this room with Jack Daniels and, and, and Cavassier and all that other stuff. Lock me up in here. And when you come out the next day, every single bottle will be just like it was when you put me in there. Because there's nothing in there to pull on me with. Not a thing at all. Won't be a ship. Won't be not one thing missing. There's nothing in there. And Jesus said, he's coming, but there's nothing in me. Men and women, boys and girls, you got to wake up and let God fix you. So there's nothing inside of you. There's no emotion in there. There's no mindset in there. It's all Jesus. God, Paul said, for God I live and for God I die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm dying to flesh. I'm dying to my mindset. I'm dying to my thought process. I'm dying to me. It's all about Jesus and nothing else. The Bible said they love not their lives unto the death. Think about it. Think about that statement. I love not my life unto the death. God, if I die, I'm dying saved. God, if I die, I'm dying on the gospel. God, if I die, I'm dying right where you are. God, if I die, then I'm dying preaching the gospel. If I die, I'm dying singing whatever I'm supposed to sing. I'm dying doing your will. I'm putting God first. I'm putting God first. There's a devil sitting there. And some of y'all say, well, that's you, Pastor. You, more mature than me. Just show me where that's in the Bible. Show me that one. Where the Bible says, I'm more mature than you, so I should be able to have more victory than you. Show me it. It's not there. We got to stay in. Some things we got to bear. Some stuff we got to fight. When I was in the world, the last thing I wanted around me was a wimp. That's the last thing I wanted around me is a sissy. If I, we got to get into this and doing this, I don't need to be, I don't need no cowards around me. You know, coward, you gonna run off. You talking about me one time? We was in the, in the, in the Deja Vu Club and all that, and a big old fight. It was a bunch of people from Richmond, and it was a bunch of us from San Francisco. Big old huge brawl fight. Just fighting everywhere. Fighting on the dance floor, fighting in the crowd, fight, 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 fight. Everywhere. The last thing I needed around was a bunch of wimps going to run out. Amen. Talking about, I, I was with you. Well, where was you? <laughs> I'm fighting three or four of them. You, where was you at? I didn't see you nowhere. Where was you? Don't need that. When you come on this side of Calvary, you don't need no wimps around you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? You don't need no coward around you. You need somebody that's washed in the blood of Jesus like you are. You need somebody that's willing to say, for God I live and for God I stand. That's who I'm with. You need somebody that's just like you with you. You don't need nobody, no less, no other thing. Well, I'll be there. No, then you, when you get there, catch up. But I need somebody that's like me on this battlefield. Because the devils I'm dealing with now, they're pretty big devils. And I need somebody that's willing to handle some devils. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you today? 
And every situation, God makes a way to bear it. Stop looking for the escape hatch. Looking for the doorway out. Looking for a quick fix. Getting mad at God when God don't answer your prayer. Maybe you shouldn't be in the situation and God don't have to answer that prayer. Maybe you put yourself in that situation. Maybe that's why God's not going to answer that. But he will give you the strength to bear it. He will give you the ability to stand in it. He won't take it. But he say, oh, you're going to stand through this. Think about this. Apostle Paul, who was more anointed than I'll ever be in 10, 50 lifetimes. God never once took him from anything that he had to go through. When he was in the ocean overnight, God didn't send a ship by to rescue him. He stayed in that ocean all night. When they beat him and left him for dead, God didn't send the army of soldiers or folks in there to say, hey, get back, leave him alone. He laid there dead. They thought he was dead. Then when it came to the next day, they seen if he was dead and God raised him back up. They thought he had died. They thought they whooped him till he was dead. God didn't send an angel down there to stop them people from whooping him. But God brought him through and rose him up the next day. When Peter and John was preaching at the gate of beautiful and the man got up that was healed. The Bible says they laid hands on him. They whooped him, put him in jail and said, now don't go out and preach on this Jesus no more. Don't go preach on this Jesus no more. As soon as they got bailed out, San Francisco, we used to have Puccinelli bail bonds. I don't know who they are. That's the one who used to bail me out. Puccinelli's. Well, I don't know whoever bailed them out. They got out. What do you think the first thing Peter and John went to doing? Preaching Jesus. And then they got together. The church folks said, now did not we tell them not to do that? We told y'all don't do that. And you went right back and did what we told you not to do. They said, you can tell us till you turn blue in the face. Our God told us to do it. We're going to do this. Because you can whoop us again and our God will bring us back out again. <laughs> God not going to take us out of the fire. I read that scripture for years. And then the Lord just gave, gave me the understanding. He said, I'll give you the way to bear it. That is the escape. To bear it. Every one of you needs some divine strategy in one area or another in your life. All y'all got fires going on. Some of them fires is self-created. And some of them is God's allowing them to be there. But some of them you created it yourself. You did that. But even in that, God will give you a strategy. How to bear it. That don't mean he's going to extinguish that fire. But he'll give you, when I was in the Navy, we used to wear something called dungarees. Dungarees were fire retardant clothes. So when the fire, because everybody in the Navy has to be a firefighter. They teach you how to fight fire because in case the ship catch on fire and you're out in the ocean, you can't call the paramedics to come and rescue nobody because you're out there. So you have to say either you save the ship or you all go in the ocean. Whichever way, you, it's up to y'all. How you going to do that? So everybody got to learn how to fight a fire. And so they give you what they call, the clothes are called dungarees. I don't know what they got now. They're probably more fancy now. I don't know. But they're supposed to be a fire retardant. So when you're fighting the fire, you're actually in the flame. Well, you work in an oil refinery. You're actually in the flame. I've had to do this. I've had to do it. It's four people to a fire hose. And there's what's called the nozzle man. That's the man on the front. Then two paces behind him, there's another one. Then another two paces, another and another. And every 10 seconds... You have to relieve the nozzle man. So the man on the front, he gets a tap. Then he goes to the second position. And then the next man, then 10 more seconds. And that way you keep rotating them because you in where the fire is. Now, I've done that. I'm not telling you something somebody told me. I'm telling you I actually was in it. In there, the fire. The fire under, coming up underneath the ground. Fire coming out the wall. All kind of coming all kind of directions. 
hot fire, not like no oven, the real fire, flames. And you got the whole breathing thing on and all that, the whole breathing apparatus and the whole, the whole air tank, the whole shebang. And they taught us that ain't nobody going to deliver you out this fire. They taught us that. They said, nobody going to come around. There's no 911 going to come rescue you. Either you get rescued or you die. Simple. Plain and simple. Either you get ready, either you all work together as a team or you all die. Is that right, Deacon Herndon? Is that right? You was in the Marines. Is that right? So you die. When you were in the Marines. Never took us out the fire. Then we, we get out and be like, man, I thought what we could do realize we could die. Said, you know, you ain't gonna die because if you want to live, you ain't gonna die. <laughs> and if you want to live in God, you ain't gonna die. You're gonna do everything in God to survive. That means I'm gonna hunker down and get all that gospel I can get. I'm gonna pray as much as I can pray. I'm gonna fast as much as I can fast. I'm gonna get in that word as much because I don't want to die. So I'm going to do everything I need to do to assure myself that I will survive. That I will survive. There's not a lot of good old preachers left. Shambach is gone. Parsley's got throat cancer. A lot of them is gone now. A. Allen gone. Jack Cole gone. Branham gone. Cooper's 80 years old. There's not a lot of old preachers left that lead the people into the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of idiot preachers that lead people how to get prosper and how to make them happy. And I call them idiots. I know what I said. Because they are. It's idiot. Because they're not giving people the whole counsel of God. They're keeping the churches full. And buying $10 million jets. And the people are going through the fire and they're perishing. But it doesn't matter. It's needs because if 50 perish in the congregation, that's okay. We just go get 50 more and it's replaced. So we could care less. I remember Wayne, Wayne Tyeski, he's gone now. He had died of brain cancer. He was going to Eddie Long's church. Turn this thing off.